When it comes to microwave transformers, I've already used them quite a few times on this channel, but I've never really talked about how to use them safely, which I think is a really important topic because these transformers can be extremely dangerous. And what I mean by that is that if you get shocked by one of these, there is quite a high chance that you'll die from it, about 70% or higher. And if not, you're definitely gonna get some horrible scars and burns. So it is really important to know what you're doing when working with these things. So let me talk about some of the things that I think is especially important when it comes to working with these transformers. First of all, being that I've seen quite a few people on the internet connecting their arcing stick to the high voltage terminal here and then arcing off the core. Now that is quite a bad idea because first of all, the arc can blow away from the core and hit the secondary which could damage it. But most importantly, if the core is grounded, then the end of your arcing stick is going to have a high voltage to ground. And if there's any problem with your arcing stick and it somehow conducts, you're going to get a shock. So don't do that. Whenever possible in the room of high voltage, you should always ground the end of your high voltage arcing stick. So that if the stick conducts for some reason, you're going to be safe and you won't get a shock. But in some cases, like for example with neon sign transformers or at very high voltages with like x-ray transformers and stuff, that is not possible. And then you have to connect your, the end of your high voltage stick to one of um, usually two high voltage terminals. And then the end is gonna have a voltage to ground. And in those cases I recommend grounding um, the arcing stick itself. Now this actually becomes especially important when working with very high voltages like x-ray transformers it is always recommended that you ground your arcing stick like this i'll probably make a future video where i show you how to do that and the second thing is that as you probably have noticed with my dual mod setups i always ground the primaries and secondaries of my microwave transformer when not in use. I just have a bunch of alligator clips which I just clip onto the terminals to short them out. Now this is quite important because if the power would get turned on by accident it would flow into the transformer here and then immediately get shorted to ground. And like that there will be no dangerous voltage at the output and the breaker will instantly trip, which that could pro potentially save your life. Now, you gotta be careful when doing this because you might think, okay, well, let's just connect just one alligator clip or grounding terminal to one of the pins of the transformers. But you definitely shouldn't do that because something like this could happen where you have your life here and your neutral here and you accidentally clipped your clip to the neutral conductor. Now let's say the power would get turned on. Now what would happen in that case is that the power would flow from the neutral and then through the grounding electrode and back into mains. And as you can see, we have current flow through the primary, which would mean that we have a high voltage on the secondary. Now, usually, if you have a GFCI circuit breaker, which would sense this fault current, it would also instantly trip and you would probably be relatively safe. But if you don't have such a breaker, then the current flow would just continue and go to ground and the transformer would basically operate as normal and you could still get a deadly shock from the output. So don't do this. What I would recommend you instead to do is to ground both primary terminals and if you want to, this is theoretically optional but I still always do it, is also grant the secondary. Now here you theoretically just need one clip because one end of the transformer is usually ground but if your transformer is not grounded then it is also necessary to use another clip to short out the other side but if it's grounded this clip is theoretically not necessary. I still use it 
in case something goes horribly wrong. Now another good thing to have is a so-called dead man switch, which is just two switches on a box or two momentary push buttons to be more precise and they should be far enough away so that you can't like bridge them with just one hand and that you actually have to use both of your hands to press the buttons. Like that you can't have any of your hands connected to any of the high voltage terminals and the power can't be switched on while you handle any of the equipment. Now this is usable in high voltage applications where you don't have to use one hand. For example while arcing you usually have to use one hand to hold the arcing stick and in that case it is like a good idea to have like a push button in one hand that you can hold and then another button on the arcing stick. Now I've solved this issue a little bit differently. What I have done is that I have one button, a momentary button on the arcing stick and then there's a second person at the power supply which also has a momentary button and they're wired up in series so that both have to be pressed for the system to be energized. Now this is definitely something I would recommend, especially if you work alone, that you have such dead man switches so that in case that something goes wrong and for example you get the shock that you let go of the switches and like that the entire system turns off. Now electrical hazards are not the only hazards that apply when working with high voltage. For example, there could also be shrapnels or dangerous radiations like ultraviolet or infrared light. And because of that, I would highly recommend you to buy some safety glasses. Now, they don't have to be anything fancy. You can use cheap safety glass for like one or two bucks, like these ones, which are the ones I have used until now. They just cost me one or two bucks and they have worked well. Now, the good thing about these ones is that they have a polycarbonate lens and like that they absorb ultraviolet light and if you get safety glasses try to get some with polycarbonate lenses because like that you'll also be protected from ultraviolet light to some degree at least and it is really important that whenever possible wear them because accidents could happen at any time so definitely always wear your safety glasses now when it comes to arcing mods and stuff like that, your normal safety glasses aren't gonna cut it. So in those cases you need welding filters. What I would recommend is a shade from like 10 to 11, which should be fine for most applications. Now I use automatic welding helmets which switch between bright and dark depending on if the arc is struck or not. And I would highly recommend you to buy one of those. But be careful to buy them from a trusted seller. And I would not recommend you to buy a cheap one from China. Because the Chinese are definitely not always known to follow rules and specifications. So if you can, get a good one. Otherwise there might be some UV leakage. So be careful when buying those. So if you can't afford a welding helmet, I would urge you to buy one of these glasses. Because they're very cheap and they should be available almost anywhere. Just be very careful when it comes to working with your transformers. Especially when using these because the split seconds before you ignite the arc and where you already have your glasses in front of your eyes you can't see anything so be very careful when it comes to that and as soon as possible upgrade to a welding helmet because that is a lot safer now i hope this video helps you to maybe improve your safety when working with microwave transformers or high voltage in general. And yeah, I've also written a safety protocol, so if you're interested, there's a link to it in the description where you can read it or also download it if you want. Which, now that safety protocol covers about everything that I use to keep myself safe, and so maybe it's helpful. So now, Thank you for watching, definitely stay safe and keep exploring science. This was Science by Sergio and I'm out.